My name is Mallory Yongwei. I'm originally um, Jackson Anderson from Saddle Lake. Well, I got to meet Erica, this lovely student, came to uh, my house in Edmonton and we drove together um, here to Saddle Lake. Uh, Mallory's father uh, hunted a moose and he's bringing it back now and we're going to see it get prepared and <laughs> skinned and uh, cooked, I think. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to show you guys what's going to happen tonight and I guess in the next little while here. Well, uh, we went we went hunting and uh, we shot a moose. We knew where they where they were. We had hunted there before, and it just so happened he was in that same area. Right. Yeah. Uh, about a month. No. <laughs> oh, last day. About oh, three months. Three months. Uh, I've never even been this close to a living moose before. It's a little bit like surreal, I guess. Um, yeah. Interesting to see um, <laughs> how it's done and how it's done right, I guess. Oh! Oh! <laughs> 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 got you, Trina. Hey, it's always messy. <laughs> Helping hand. A little bit. Just <laughs> holding his hand, making sure he's <laughs> comforted. <laughs> <laughs> Onto the Jeep. <laughs> Onto the Jeep. Improvise. Improvise. Tenderloin moose meat and <laughs> fresh bannock. We're having some eggs and potatoes too. Paparazzi, see so you gotta deal with. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so we're right in the middle of Saddle Lake, and I essentially kind of grew up, um, you know at my parents house on the north side but my my grandmother my Kukum, she lived just on the corner of the town site there wasn't a lot to do there was a lot of the same people that did the same things and the same um bad things and and so growing up as a teenager i obviously got involved in a lot of that and um some of the drugs and the drinking that there's nothing else to do for for us out here. I was fortunate enough to grow up in on the very north side where my parents live now and um, and that was a good thing for me it was that I got to you know be a free-range child and run around in the fields and ride horses and uh, be really grounded in that sense and always have sort of that safe home base to always go to. I left when I was 16 so I was you know I was still a teenager. Um, I had to get a job <laughs> I had to go to school every day and having to take the bus and be just a complete um, nobody in this sea of just different kinds of people um, was just super life-changing for me. I didn't like it at first. I, um, my, my dad would actually have to like, you know, my mom and dad would actually have to leave me crying in the city because they knew that it was good for me to be there and not here. It's different in the city now because I, I love it, but I also feel this really disconnect to my community. It's pretty humbling. I keep telling our young people, you know, we are not Indians. We're not. We're Kainai, we're Nasutina, you know, Nehio, you know, Dennis and Loni, you know, and all the, the different uh, uh, ethnicities uh, relative to this uh, Turtle Island, you know. So. Something similar to Europe. They have Germans, they have French, they have Ukrainians, etc. You know, the same. If you respect yourself, it becomes easier to respect the, you know, human nature and everything else around you. Growing up, my whole life, what I love to do, 
Well, I, I love to enjoy my life for what, the way it is now. I love my grandkids a lot. Hunting teaches me a lot of patience. And it keeps me physically active, keeps my mind occupied, all kinds of things. Like uh, traditional values. Every time I hunt, we take a, a real good portion of it to the elders, eh? And uh, that's a Cree custom. Howdy. That's, that's their papa. Hey, papa. Hi, Hi. girl. Come on, give me a big hug. Come on. Come on. Stop. Nope. Why? Just no. Nobody else is doing it, and it's it's uh, we're gonna lose it. It's part of our culture. It's part of uh, like the language. We almost lost our language. Not too many people speak our language anymore. This is a really sacred place for me here. I grew up right here. This is all our land here. This was my grandfather's land. He had lots of horses here. We had a really big farm here. What would you like to teach us? Well, I would have liked to teach you more Cree. But you guys, when you were growing up, you were learning Cree. Actually, you understand really good Cree but you were used to laugh at each other's Cree. Oh, of course. Because you did, you both, you all sounded funny. <laughs> of course. The way of life that I knew is pretty much gone. Nobody hunts and traps anymore. Not very much. They do it for pleasure. We used to do it for a living. This business of uh, being Indian, Aboriginal, and uh, Native kind of concerned me, you know. So I went out and asked the elders, so what kind of a people are we? You know what he told me? He said, we are people of the land. We belong to the land. The land does not belong to us. At the universities, you know, they, they say that we surrendered the land, seceded the land, and. There is no such word in Cree to translate that. You are treaty. You're here in the, on this land by virtue of treaty. But you are benefiting from being a treaty much more so than me and my people. <laughs> 